Let's welcome in Hall of Famer and the only goalie in history to record 1130 wins in his first 12 seasons in the National Hockey League. Well, let's welcome in the most hamps, ham, hamson, <laughs> handsomeness. There it is. Handsomest man in NHL history, Henrik Lundqvist. See, I'm so nervous. And I, I didn't get a chance to shower up or comb my hair with you on a screen with us. I'm so nervous. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? Hey, thanks. Thanks for joining yeah, us. Thank you. Um, just take us back a week ago and just the whole experience of, of what you went through uh, in a full circle moment of, of a Hall of Fame. And uh, does, it, does it seem surreal? Were you able to absorb it all? Yeah, you know, what an incredible weekend. I'm so grateful to, you know, in life, you don't get that many opportunities to just gather friends, family, you celebrate, uh, obviously, you celebrate the career a little bit. But most importantly, you just share uh, an incredible weekend with people that means so much to me. And, um, you know, the staff at the Hall of Fame was incredible setting everything up and, and Obviously, Monday was extremely special to have that ceremony. That that for me was when it really hit home. And, and I have to say to have uh, Patrick Raw hand the plaque to me, that, that was special. Uh, growing up, I was a you know huge fan. It was a big inspiration to me. Uh, so in a way, it was really full circle in that, in that moment for me. Well, that was, uh, yeah, really special, and congrats on that from all of us. That was pretty pretty awesome to watch. Uh, I can imagine that you and a lot of the other big-name Swedish hockey players were paying attention to the games going on in Stockholm over the past week. Willie Nylander, the very guy who took you out after a big Swedish victory, is the hero. <laughs> what were your thoughts? Did you hear anything about the response in Sweden from having the uh, the four NHL teams there? Well, uh, first off, I'm just so happy for him. I know how special it is to, you know, as a Swede, go back to Sweden and play there. And then you're obviously extremely proud to represent your team in the NHL. But to get an opportunity to to play those games overseas means a lot. Uh, I did it with the Rangers and it was an incredible experience. And for him to have that weekend a week, uh, I mean, I've been paying attention to his game here over the last couple of years and um he's just taking it to the next level right now he's so fun to watch he's so powerful and skilled uh you know i remember the first time i i ran into him when i was playing with his dad michael back in 05 06 he was a tiny little kid but you can see his talent but still it's a long way to go from being a talented little kid to you know to be where he's at right now i'm, I'm just so impressed henrik um as far as Willie's concerned with his situation in, in Toronto, you had a similar situation where you were looking at unrestricted free agency and the thought process is your, your heart was first and foremost in New York. You ended up managing to sign a seven year deal, if I'm not mistaken. Can you run parallels to what maybe Willie might be going through and, and describe the process that you went through to come to the conclusion that New York was the city that you wanted to be in for the next seven years? Yeah, I think for me, year one, year two in the league, you're kind of fighting for your life a little bit. You just want to establish yourself. It doesn't matter what you accomplished overseas, national team or winning championships. You're kind of starting over. So you establish yourself the first couple of years. And then, you know, for me, I started to create all these uh, relationships and, 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 how much I cared and, and really enjoyed playing for the Rangers just grew for each year. So it was never really a, a question going elsewhere when, you know, there was time to talk about that big deal and a long-term commitment. Um, so for him, obviously it's, it's very personal for everyone, wherever they're playing and, and the different reasons what, what, why you want to stay. But um, I can only speak for myself. And for me, it, it, it was not really a, a long thought process. Uh, I knew early on New York was a place for me and, and, and it was my home and, and I just enjoyed so much being part of the organization and, and the city. Uh, but of course it's, it's a, it's an exciting time for him right now. 
the way he's playing and uh, obviously a lot of people are talking about him and his game and what's next. Uh, I think the most important thing is just you, you worry about the game and the rest will, will take care of itself. Yeah. You know, that's, um, that certainly is the case for forwards. And I know for, for goaltenders as well, it's like, it's such a mental thing, getting a good place to, to play well, to be a goaltender, probably more so than any other position. And I wanted to get your thoughts on the state of NHL goaltending today I just kind of want to get your thoughts on on why there aren't any, sorry, great, I shouldn't say there aren't any, there aren't as many guys where it's Patrick Waugh or it's Henrik Lundqvist or it's Marty Broder. There seems to be a lot of tandems. You don't see guys play in 60 games. You know, the sort of evolution of the position. Why is it that there, we don't have as many guys that stand out in the way that you guys did in your primes? Well, a couple of things. I think the game has changed a little bit. You you can't have guys play 65, 70 games, which was the case. When I entered the league, there was a bunch of us. We we, we were on the 70 mark all, all the time. Uh, I think now the game is, uh, is more intense. And, and uh, obviously, they also start looking at numbers to have a long, uh, successful year. You, you want to um, cut down the number of games guys are playing. Uh, but also you have to remember how many starters actually left the league between 2019 and 22. It was all, I saw a list uh, a few weeks. There was a lot of guys that, that played a lot of minutes, played a lot of games that, that left the league. So obviously there, there's a transition there, a uh, new generation of goaltenders. Uh, so that in combination with guys playing less games, I, I think uh, I, that, that's just the, the new look of the league now. We're talking You're looking to, at 50, 55 games, maybe. We're talking to Henrik Lundqvist, uh, New York Ranger, great and hockey Hall of Famer, currently a TNT hockey analyst. Just staying on this subject for uh, a second, Henrik, what about the way we're teaching the kids the position? And, you know, I'm watching most often than not uh, this reverse VH that uh, <laughs> drives me nuts, Henrik. I got to be honest with you. Like, yeah. I, why did they always stand up for me and they didn't give me any of the top net and all of a sudden I see everybody going high over the shoulders, but it just seems like everybody's taught a certain style now and there's less personality in the position than we had with the likes of uh, the great ones, including yourself. Yeah, it's definitely a new look. Uh, I think over the last 10 years, you've seen a lot of new um, movements uh, you know, the, the way guys are moving from the post and out, but also on, on their knees, they use it a lot more. Uh, personally, I was never a fan of the reverse VH. Uh, I was also, I think, a mix of old and new, so I never really got into it. But I agree with it. There's definitely an overusage of it at times. Some guys master it, and some guys, I think, need to just understand when to use it and when to be on their feet. Um but, you know, if you look at goaltending, how much it's developed over the last 10, 15 years, I think you see guys start doing certain things and then they have to bring it back because you're adjusting to the shooters the way the shooters are adjusting to goalies. So uh, this year we've seen a lot of goals going in um, in the reverse VH position. So maybe we'll see less of it. Um, but I hear you. I really do. So how much did you pay attention to the evolution of the position while you were playing? Because it does feel like the position has changed. As you got on in your career, were you reading about what other people were doing, talking to other goalie coaches, or are you just like, I'm really good at this. I'm not changing anything. <laughs> well, I was lucky. I had probably the best goaltender, goaltending coach uh, in the business with Benoit Lair. Right. So we were on the same page right away, talking about the position and, and, we didn't really change much over the 15 years. Of course, throughout my career, there were small adjustments here and there, but um, you definitely pay attention. But you also have to understand what's going to make me good. Just because it's working for other guys doesn't mean that's going to work for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I remember watching pa or Dominic Hasek. I'm, I'm at probably 15 years old. That was the first time I saw a goalie do, go down, paddle down. So the next day I, I tried out in practice. It's like, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So of course you have moments like that where you try certain things, but then you have to think about, will this fit my style of play? I'm 6'1". I, I was never 
you know, a big goalie. So certain moves, especially the uh, reverse VH, um, I leave a lot of room open up top if I'm, if I'm down on my knees too much. So from my era to where we are today, we've seen the New York Rangers go from Mike Richter to you to Shesterkin. And I'm like, how lucky can one organization get here? Uh, in, in you watching the New York Rangers here, how how close is this team? Uh, I'm really impressed. And, and we talked about this on air last night, actually, just how ready they looked already in game one and two. And to me, it was the positioning. It was the reads. Uh, and a lot of times when you have a new head coach come in and you change the system a little bit, you you need a few weeks, sometimes a month, to to make it click. But for them, it, it, they were ready to go. And their top guys are performing extremely well. Uh, they're getting a lot of big efforts from the third and fourth line. So right now, they're very well balanced, you know, from goaltender and out. And special teams, obviously, their power play clicking over 30%. I think right now in this league, five on five is pretty tough. But if you have a killer power play, it's going to win you so many games. Henrik, uh, last one for me, and we've got you on during our Leafs hour, so I have to ask you a Leafs-related question by law. Uh, the goalies here are Samsonov and Wall. Um, I, I wanted to get your thoughts on, if not Samsonov specific- specifically, but the type of goaltender like him who he can be very busy, like he's athletic and he there seems to be a lot of movement. You know, what are your thoughts? We often hear when a guy's playing well, he's quiet or, you know, in the net or whatever, that doesn't seem to be Samsonov's style. Is quiet always a good thing, or is that a varied thing from goalie to goalie? Again, I think goaltending is 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 about playing to your strength. Okay. And, and you look around the league right now, there's so many different styles. There's different ways of doing it. In the end, it comes down to stopping the puck. But there's different ways of doing it. Uh, but the one thing you can be sure of is... Any goaltender in this league benefits from good structure in their own end. It makes it so much easier to make decisions, even if it's a clear shot. If you as a goalie know that your D-man or fours are taking up their their guys, so you can really focus on the shooter, it makes your game so much easier. So sometimes, you know, you focus so much on the goaltender and less on the structure in their own end. Um, but listen, playing, playing in Toronto, you're under a the microscope. There's no question about it. And when you play in New York, uh, there's no question about it that there has to be some star quality. And, you know, uh, sometimes it, I, it drives me nuts when people are really good at everything, but you're the exception because I really like you and admire you. <laughs> but, you know, when I think of New York, I do think of that star attraction, like a Jeter, a Manning. I saw Messier when I was there and, and you, and it just seems like everything comes naturally to you, whether it's in net or playing the guitar on the tonight show with Jimmy <laughs> Fallon. And like, were you always this way? Even as a kid, did you ever sweat or get nervous at all? Why is it so natural for you? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I do sweat. I do get nervous. <laughs> I, make a lot, I, I make a lot of mistakes, but uh, I just try to have fun, you know? And, and to me, we talked earlier about uh, how well the city fit me and how much I enjoyed being here. And, and part of it is just the opportunity of doing different things and meeting people. And the one word that co- keeps coming back to me is opportunity in this city. So I really enjoy myself throughout my career. Uh, you know, now um, transitioning into my next chapter, I, I feel like New York is the perfect place. And I, I just love being part of the city and MSG uh, where I work as an ambassador now and, yeah, you know, I'm just having fun with it. The actor strikes over. Can can I help you with motion pictures? Uh, I could be your agent. <laughs> you know what? When I played, uh, I was so focused on next game, next performance. Now I'm very open to life experiences and kind of see where it will take me. I don't know what I'm going to do in four or five years. I just know right now I really enjoy Mayor what I'm Lundfest. doing. So. It, Keep an eye it, out. It, the, the, you know... <laughs> The only thing he was missing was was a cup. Can you envision yeah. being a president, a GM, and 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 getting a cup another way now? Um, right now, I I just love exploring. I want to be part of the game for sure. I love the game. I'm a big fan of the game. But the day to day, be part of of hockey is not something I'm looking for right now. 
Uh, but again, I, I don't know what I'm looking for in 10 years or, or down the road. I just love, you know, seeing other sides of, of the world right now and yeah. in the city and, and people and, and the hockey world I know, but we'll see down the road what happens. Well, we will look forward to whatever you do. We'll be following closely. We can't thank you enough for making time for us, man. I, I, I've tried on a couple occasions, but uh, getting you today was worth the wait. Thanks for doing this. Thank you. Good to see you guys. Thanks so much. Happy we appreciate it.